Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melissa and I'm a nursing student, but I also have a master's degree in healthcare administration. So in this video, I'm going to very briefly talk about exactly what an MHA or a master's degree in healthcare administration is, and then I'm going to get into different professions that you can go into with a degree in healthcare administration. Now, before I get any farther in today's video, I wanna quickly take a minute to say thank you so much to everybody who has recently subscribed to my channel. If you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like my video or the content, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up or feel free to comment down below. I also leave my email address in all of my videos, so if you have any personal questions that you would like to ask me, I am always happy to answer. Okay, so now to actually get into today's video, First, I'm going to briefly talk about exactly what a degree in healthcare administration is. I have my master's degree in healthcare administration and what a master's degree in healthcare administration or an MHA for short essentially allows you to do is it allows you to be in leadership roles in healthcare facilities, healthcare organizations, and healthcare systems. Now, even though I have my master's degree in healthcare administration, you can get a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration and I believe some two-year universities or two-year colleges allow you to get an associate's degree in healthcare administration. So depending on which degree you get, basically a healthcare administration degree is a business degree that has a focus in healthcare. And that is the most simple way that I can put it, especially if you live in the United States like I do. Whether you like it or not, healthcare really is a business in this country. And although you can go to school and get an MBA, which is a master's in business degree, and MHA, which is a master's in healthcare administration, really allows you to focus on healthcare if you know that that is the area that you want to work in. So now I'm quickly going to go over just a few of the very many professions that you can do with a degree in healthcare administration. I do plan to make a future video where I talk about different professions you can go into if you are a nurse and you wanna go back to school and get a master's degree in healthcare administration. And I also plan to make a video on more entry level positions that you can have, but for for the purpose of this video, I am going to be talking about higher paying jobs. So kind of like a career outlook, things you can aspire to if you are looking to obtain this degree. So the very first profession that I'm going to mention is a profession that I actually spent a few years working in, and that is being an assistant administrator at a skilled nursing facility or a SNF for short. You also may know a skilled nursing facility as a nursing home, but so many nursing homes have evolved way past what your image of nursing homes probably are, and so they are called skilled nursing facilities. The facility that I worked at was actually coupled with a rehab center, so it was a mid-level facility in patient care that was half nursing home, half rehab center, and I was the assistant administrator for a couple of years at this facility. So the average salary of an assistant administrator at a skilled nursing facility is 45,000. I was making around 50,000 when I was doing this position, and I was doing this position before I obtained my master's degree. So once I obtained my master's degree, I would have been making more, and essentially an assistant administrator works directly underneath the administrator of one of these facilities, and they handle the day-to-day -day operations. So there are different departments within a skilled nursing facility. Of course, there's the nursing department, there's the medical team where you have physicians and nurse practitioners. You also have social workers, you have environmental services, which is like housekeeping, life enrichment and activities, administration, it is this whole big system where you are helping to oversee the day-to-day -day tasks of what is going on in the building, and you're essentially acting as the right-hand man to the administrator. Which brings me to the next profession that I'm going to go over in this video, which is a nursing home administrator. Now, every state has different laws and regulations on how you can become a nursing home administrator, but across the board, for the most part, a lot of organizations do expect you to have a degree in healthcare administration or business administration. Some facilities will be okay with you having a bachelor's degree in nursing and then having a lot of experience working in administration. The average salary of a nursing home administrator in the United States is 125000 
but of course that pay ranges depending on what area you are in and many facilities do allow you to have pay increases and do give you incentives if your facility meets certain quotas and meets certain goals that pay can increase with a raise every year I will say that in Maryland, in addition to having an administrative background or a healthcare administration degree, you also do need to go through an AIT program, which is an administrator in training program. It's a year long program where you get to actually shadow an administrator. They will be your preceptor and you get to kind of spend a year in the life being an administrator, seeing exactly what you're in for. And then at the end of that, you do have to sit for an exam to get your nursing home administrator license. This is a very stressful job, but it is very well paying, as I just mentioned, and it is a very fulfilling career. Just like the assistant administrator of a skilled nursing facility, like I just mentioned, the administrator of a skilled nursing facility oversees the day-to-day -day operations. They work with the finance team to make sure that enough beds are being filled and enough people are coming into the facility. They work with different departments and they really oversee see every department they're the boss of everybody but more importantly they're essentially the boss of each department head so the director of nursing reports to the administrator typically the administrator and the medical director will work together to make sure that patients are safe and make sure that goals are being met for the facility the director of social work will be reporting to the administrator the director of culinary services life enrichment housekeeping and environmental services, everybody is reporting to the administrator. For lack of a better term, the administrator of a skilled nursing facility is essentially the big boss. It is a very stressful position, but it is very well compensated and it can be extremely rewarding. And it is a career path that you can go down if you get a degree in healthcare administration. Now the next job is similar in a lot of aspects and that is a hospital administrator. The average salary of a hospital administrator in the United States is about 250,000. And just like the administrator of a skilled nursing facility, a hospital administrator can make more in bonuses if they hit certain goals and they can make more in raises. So just like the nursing home administrator, the hospital administrator oversees everything that happens in the hospital, all department heads, are essentially reporting to the hospital administrator. The hospital administrator works to make sure that PR for the hospital is okay and the hospital has a good reputation. They're making sure that each department is hitting their goals. This is another extremely stressful job, of course, but it can be extremely rewarding and of course, very well compensated. This is definitely an end of career goal. So this is not something where you get your degree in healthcare administration and then two years later you are running a hospital. You will definitely need to take steps and think of a career path in order to get here. Now the next job is working as an admissions director. So like I mentioned, I used to work at a skilled nursing facility. One of the jobs I did at that organization was actually being an admissions coordinator. So I reported to an admissions director. Admissions directors are in skilled nursing facilities, they are in rehab centers, they're in hospitals, pretty much anywhere where you are getting patient admissions, you're going to have an admissions department or an intake department, and then you're going to have the head of that department, which for this video is an admissions director. Now the salary for admissions directors ranges so widely just because their admissions directors in pretty much any area of patient care that you're going to have. So there are admissions directors for hospitals, for inpatient treatment centers, for outpatient treatment centers, for nursing homes, for rehab centers. So the pay will range. And then of course, depending on what area you live in, the pay will also range. But on average, when I was doing my research, I saw that admissions directors typically make around $116,000 a year. Now this is a job where, of course, again, depending on the setting, this position can make bonuses. So if a hospital, for example, or a nursing home, for example, has a quota that they would like to have a certain number of admissions by the end of the year. If the admissions director helps to meet that goal or to even exceed that goal, then there can of course be a lot of financial bonuses and monetary gain from that. So that is the average base salary of an admissions director. And then of course there are bonuses and raises that you can also make to make more money. So I can't speak for all facilities and all types of organizations, but when I worked in a skilled nursing facility and rehab center and I was the admissions coordinator, the admissions director that I reported to, of course, oversaw the entire admissions department. She worked with nursing staff and with social work 
to determine which patients we should be accepting from the hospital and the type of patients that we were able to take care of. And then she also worked with the marketing team so that she could go out into the community and kind of help get new admissions to the facility. Admissions directors will work with insurance companies to get prior authorization. They will work with finance to make sure that enough money is being pulled in. This is also an extremely high stress job, but it can be very, very rewarding, just like all of the other jobs that I've mentioned before this. So the last position that I'm going to mention is a health services manager. And this can also be called a healthcare executive or a departmental head. This is a very broad term, and I believe that all of the professions that I mentioned up until this point could technically fall underneath this category. Essentially, a health services manager helps to direct, helps to lead, and helps to plan different departments. You can be a health services manager in a hospital setting, a skilled nursing facility, or in a rehab center or in a doctor's office, pretty much any healthcare organization. And it essentially just allows you to have a team that you are overseeing. Every single organization that you have, especially for inpatient care, there are different departments, whether that is life enrichment and activities, whether that is administration, when you're moving to the hospital setting, of course, the hospital has different departments. They have the risk management and the quality assurance department, which is administrative, but then you'll also have a departmental head for the emergency department, for med surge, for surgery services. All of those things do require department heads. And a lot of the time those department heads will have degrees in healthcare administration. Of course, there are certain departments in certain areas and healthcare settings where even if you do have an MHA, it'll need to be coupled with something else. For example, nursing. Everywhere that you go, there is a head of the nursing department. Typically, they're called director of nursing. That does need to be a nurse, a registered nurse. But if you are a registered nurse and you go back to school and get your master's degree in healthcare administration, that will give you a leg up in becoming a director of nursing. If you are in the social work department, typically the heads of those departments are actual social workers. So you could be a social worker and then go back to school and get your degree in healthcare administration, which can also give you a leg up. So there are certain departments where you really do need to have a licensure in that area. But then when you're looking at other departments like I mentioned administration admissions life enrichment things like that having a MHA or a business degree in healthcare or healthcare administration is enough credentials for you to land a role in that area now because this is such a broad job the salary range is very broad. The salary range can be anywhere from about 70,000 to over 250,000. It just depends again on what type of organization you are in and what area you live in. On average, the average salary for a health services manager in the United States is about 100,000 or $101,000. So it is extremely lucrative and it is very flexible. You can work in so many different areas, which is probably the best thing about this role. And so that is just a quick overview of exactly what a master's in healthcare administration or an MHA is and what it can do for you. And then those are just a few of the career paths that you can go down with a degree in healthcare administration, whether that's a master's degree or whether that is a different degree. Like I mentioned, these are just a few of the very many jobs that you can do. And in the future, I do plan to make more videos on entry level jobs, mid level jobs, and jobs that you can do if you are already a nurse or if you already have a nursing degree. There are a lot of specialties that you can go into if you decide to go back to school and get a master's in healthcare administration opposed to getting a master's in nursing. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.